Hey there, Song Swap Showdown listeners. Do you need a serious jolt to kickstart your day? Whether you're about to conquer your next hike or you're just trying to survive your Monday morning, I want to tell you all about Cardiac Attack Coffee. That's right. This is the coffee that's sure to get your heart pumping. And you know how serious Amanda and I each take our coffee. So Cardiac Attack Coffee is bold, flavorful and single origin it's roasted in small batches to deliver the perfect cup every time whether you like it light medium or dark roast these guys have got you covered oh wait and did i mention their cold brew packs making cold brew at home has never been easier founded by three friends with a passion for coffee they perfected the art of a strong cup that'll fuel even the biggest thrill seekers and no worries no heart attacks here just a whole lot of energy and flavor you can get it over at CardiacAttackCoffee.com or find them at local spots in New Jersey like Coronado's and Brick or Pulp in Asbury Park. Plus, they've got some killer merch too, t-shirts, mugs, and more. Ready to amp up your mornings? Head over to CardiacAttackCoffee.com and fuel your adventure. And before you check out, make sure you use the code SONGSWAPSHOWDOWN for a 15% discount. That code, once again, is SONGSWAPSHOWDOWN and use that to receive a 15% discount on your order over at CardiacAttackCoffee.com. Chris and Amanda always online. Grab your headphones, it's review time. Music's the love and niche divine. Laughs and insights makes life wide. Heidi ho, everybody. Good morning. <laughs> Heidi ho. <laughs> and welcome Hi. to Chris and Amanda's Song Swap Showdown, as we do each and every Monday. Guys, we are so happy you could join us here today. And we are pumped to be doing this show for all of you, our amazing listening audience. Hopefully, you are joining us live right now and you're listening on Radio Garden State. You're watching us on YouTube or Facebook, wherever you are. We are so happy you could be here today with all of us. Before we dive into it, my name is Chris, and of course, I'm joined by that girl, <laughs> That's Amanda, me. Amanda Sharp. <laughs> That's me. Good morning, Chris, and good morning to all of our listeners, live or in the future. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so, of course, you can always listen to the show anywhere you get podcasts. Please make sure you hit that subscribe button if you're on YouTube and the little bell so that way you get notified when we go live like we do today and when we drop new episodes and videos. And, of course, if you're listening on the podcast, hit that follow button. And if you're listening on Radio Garden State, well, guys, keep it tuned here all day. There's gr- three great ways you can listen to Radio Garden State right on RadioGardenState.com. Of course, you can always listen on the TuneIn app, which is great for your car. And you can also listen on any Alexa device. If this is your first time checking out Song Swap Showdown, well, first of all, thank you, and we're happy that you're here. Number two, how the show typically works is Amanda and I each swap three songs with each other that we may or may not have heard before, and then we will rate those songs on a scale of one to five records because we are the Siskel and Ebert of music reviews, as some have called us. Truth be told, we are. (laughs) Sometimes we're called the the hot dog and soda combo of music but whatever you want to call us that's how we rate it and one record is what we consider to be a skip that's a song that note one maybe 10 seconds in and skip it (laughs) skip it done out of here not 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 our cup of tea we're not we're not feeling that one goodbye maybe somebody else's favorite but not ours right which has happened quite a few times on the show. There we go. There we go. All the way up to five records, which which is a song that we say is heavenly music to our ears. That is going on in Eternity Playlist. That's a song we never get sick of hearing. We could put it on repeat. We could listen to a billion times. That's the song you take on your desert island trip that you can never come back from. So you only have one song to listen to. (laughs) So you listen to that one. 
<laughs> that's an eternity playlist song. That's five records, guys. That's five records. And how do we pick those songs? Well, we pick it by spinning a wheel of themes at the end of every single episode. So whatever that lands on is the songs that we are going to pick, much like this week's theme, Amanda, which is, what did the well, wheel land on? <laughs> the wheel spun and it landed on songs from 2010, not the 2010s with the That's S's. Right. No, no, no. No, no. 2010. And, um, you know, we talked last week about how 2010 feels like it was yesterday. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. It, literally. He does not. <laughs> yeah, you're like, wait a second. 2010, that wasn't that long. Oh, my God. It's 2024 heading towards 2025. <laughs> it's almost 15 years ago. And by, wow. like, you know, what are the rules of rounding up? Like, that's yeah. basically two decades. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's literally two decades. It's It's insane. It's absolutely insane to think about it. And so every time we go and we do these little nostalgia trips, it's always... Uh, it's always fun. It's always like, wow, these songs are really old, but they don't feel old to us. But then you're like, mm. oh, they're kind of old. Yeah. And some of the, you know, artists are maybe alive still. Maybe they're not. Maybe yeah. they're still in the business. Maybe they're not. You know, so it's interesting because, you know, let's be honest, 15 years is a lot of seasons of change. It is. It I is mean, a lot of seasons of change. Think of where everyone was 15 years ago compared to where they are today. I mean, I know I'm not where i was then no not at all none of us are so, none of I us mean, are a lot can happen in 15 years even though it does feel just like yesterday yeah that's a great thing about music is that it's it is like a time machine you know you, you listen to it and you uh, certain songs really transport you back to like that time because they're really anchored to like a memory and yeah. uh and i always find that fun i mean there's certain things and you forget about it for a while right and then you mm -hmm. you flip on that record or that one song and you feel like boom like the memory comes like rushing back of like that time or that type of event that maybe was associated with it so it's pretty amazing the power of music absolutely hey <laughs> so i know we're talking about music right now but hey let's do a fit check on you chris so i see you have a hat on and then is it a hellfire shirt that is uh a violent gentleman uh hellfire club shirt so they did Ooh. their own they did their own version of the Hellfire Club when when Very cool. when it was a thing. So I got my Violent Gentleman Hellfire Club shirt and my Rocky Growth Agency hat that, uh, you know, stealing. Basically, it's just a knockoff of everybody does the same thing of the ACDC logo. But, <laughs> <That's okay. laughs> yeah, That's okay. but it's all right. You know? <laughs> They don't own the lightning bolt. <laughs> <laughs> they do not. They do not, or the uh, or the AC. And it, so anyway, yeah, I uh, I have my little rocket growth AC hat on. Very well. good. Yeah, thank Very you for asking about my fit check. <laughs> <laughs> just had a check in there. The hellfire I thing. I mean, let's again talk about um, how we just would really like Netflix to get on Stranger Things final final it's coming final season in 2030 it might be here <laughs> <laughs> i think because i left a comment for somebody and i said uh by the time they release the show these these actors will all have kids of their own already <laughs> i just don't get it <laughs> yeah i mean listen it's uh it sounds like it's coming though and i actually hear um our our good friend victor ruiz who is the host of uh signals from mars podcast saw the musical the Stranger Things musical in Spain, and he said it was awesome. And he's like, if you get a chance to see it in New York, because it's opening here in the States, in New York in March, he's like, you got to go. It's awesome. He said the production was great. It's wow. a script. The, the, he said it was really good, really good. So, I didn't realize that it went into a musical. How yeah, it's a, wonderful. It's a prequel. It's gonna. It's a prequel of, um, what's his name? The, the, the Big Bad from the last season. Very, very, very I good. I'm blanking out on the, the name. Because it's been decades. <laughs> yeah, it's been forever. But yeah, it's his his backstory, his his story is the, very is good. the musical. So I'm looking for I, I do. I want to see that. So if anybody wants to gift us tickets for a man and I to go review that, you know, we're happy to give our full review. Just, uh, you know, get get us in that. Get us a next show. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so uh, real quick, guys, before we do dive into our show, we do want to take a quick moment and acknowledge our veterans here because as we're doing today's show it is veterans day here in the united states so now amanda mm -hmm. your husband is a veteran is he not he is and he you know is. he is probably like many veterans who just don't really talk about it mm -hmm. 
they're very quiet about it. And right. so he never takes advantage of any of the freebies that he gets on this day right. or ever like he has not put on that uniform since the day he was out of the military. Right. Which, but to me, I'm like, hey, put that back on for a minute. You know, like it's an attractive thing to see him in if we're being honest. I mean, listen, you know, it's a uh, uniform it's, is a is an attractive thing to look at. There you go. There you go. No, but he won't put it back on. But that's OK. So he's very quiet about it. So whether you're quiet or you're very proud and, you know, wearing your stuff out and about. Just thank you so much for your service. And I come from my grandparents. All my grandparents were served. Mine too. My dad served. And it just, we we come from. Oh, I didn't know your dad served. Mm -hmm. Wow. Air Force. Yeah. Um, During Vietnam, he didn't go to Vietnam, but it was during Vietnam. So Mm -hmm. he he missed that um, just by pure luck. So, yeah, I mean, we come from a, or I come from a very, very long line of of people who serve. So thank you for your service. Absolutely. We wouldn't have the freedoms we have today. Nope. Without those sacrifices. Absolutely. Yeah. And I have many friends to many dear close friends who have served. Um, So yeah, absolutely. Thank you for your service, everybody. And uh, you know, we, we, uh, we really appreciate you very much. So thanks for all that you do. And we want to acknowledge you and all, all the veterans we have in our audience, uh, whether you're here in the United States or abroad, you know, because yeah. there's many, many people have served in their militaries and served abroad. And I know we are a global show. Yep. Uh, according to our stats, we are That's global. Great. So we want to make sure that uh, we acknowledge everybody who has served. Thank you for yep. your service, especially here in the United States of America. God yes. bless America. God bless America. <laughs> so uh, we got a couple friends checking in with us. Good morning, Mark Ronick as well. I saw him pop in, so thank you. I know Mr. Ian from Australia. He, because of the time change right now, he is in bed, but he is saying, hey, guys, have a great show. I'll watch when I'm awake. It works better that way anyway. <laughs> so Yeah, and he's left some comments for us, too, some, some picks, so we'll get to those. And for anybody else, if you want to comment as we go here, please feel free to do that. And also, feel free to play the game of song swap showdown let us know what you think about the songs that we're talking about today we're going to be rating them once again on a scale one two five records so you guys let us know what you think of the song is it a one is it a two three four five we don't care let us know even after the show as well you can leave comments and on spotify there's a whole section where you can leave comments as well so we'd love to hear from you and also let us know about any additional uh, theme ideas too for future shows we do have our big holiday extravaganza month coming up uh shortly and we are we do have themes but we're looking for new themes so feel free to drop some new holiday themes on us as well Okay, with all that being said, <laughs> woo, um, Amanda, let's get rolling. Let's do it. Who is going first this week? You know, can I go first with your song? Sure. Let's let's start us off with a little bit more energy than what okay. maybe my songs. Are yes, you had a very you had a very pensive week. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I I reached out to Chris. I was like, I don't know, should I switch my songs? I just feel like they're very much the week that, I, and you know, we're coming out of the election here in the right. States, and I don't care what side you're on. There's so much divisiveness, and people are just arguing, and it has literally broken my heart. I have seen friendships yeah. get broken up. I've seen family get broken up. And the thing is, no matter what you vote, you vote for the reason that you think is good. Yeah. Right? Like, yeah. no one's voting because they're wanting to be evil. So, of course you know, based on how we've been raised, based on our life experiences, when we go into that ballot box, we're, we're voting according to those things. So, yep. for anyone to just say, I hate you because of a color, mm-hmm. a bubble, it just really made me sad. So, I <laughs> songs are a reflection of that. And then Chris is like, you know what? You, do, you can swap them out. You can leave them. He gave me the space to do whatever I wanted to do. And I was like, all right, fine. I'll keep them. Because it's a good place to like little make a little check mark of yeah. this day in the life of Amanda. This your is picks how I are felt. your picks. That's right. That's, That's right. right. So Chris's songs to me were just a little bit more energized. <laughs> energized, little grass. I mean, it just is what it is, you know. And it, yeah. also the mood I am currently in. <laughs> and uh, when you look at 2010, there was a lot of really good metal and hard rock stuff released i actually forgot and we've done it too on the show is the very first this goes to the show the very first ghost record was released in 2010 and really? i and i've given you a lot of ghost yeah. stuff and i was like you yeah. know what i'm gonna lay off on the ghost because i've done it recently we did it in the halloween show but sure. and i forgot that that was 2010 i was like wow and i remember getting that record and i remember 
you all so much about that. Talk about records and things that take you right back. I remember getting that record and being like, these guys are so good. And uh, I think they're going to be huge. And lo and behold, now they're playing freaking arenas all over the country. So, How you know, good. they went from playing tiny little clubs in Brooklyn uh, to like gigantic arenas. But uh, I still love that first record. I, I absolutely love it. And so, but it was really cool going back and seeing all the different things that released, especially in pop music. Pop music had a huge year in 2010. It huge did. year. And, you know, for some reason in my head, I just don't feel like metal lived outside of the 80s. And it's not true to think that, you know, new Mm -hmm. artists were coming out with brand new records in 2010. Yeah. This sound just is so interesting to me because what my brain classifies it as 80s. Yeah. Instantly. And I don't I can't un un. Train that you can't untrain it. I mean, the 2010s brought the 2010, the year 2010 brought us the amazing Kesha TikTok. I love Kesha. I'm gonna say it. I don't care. I love Kesha, <laughs> and I wanted to put Kesha on my list, but I'm like, uh, you know, like I just, I, I'm like, people are gonna expect us to talk about Kesha, you know, and of mm-hmm. course, Dynamite was a big one, a Teo Cruz song, Usher had a big hit with the DJ Got Us Falling in Love. Flo Rida, Club Can't Handle Me, Airplanes by B.O.B. I mean, there were a you lot. Know, Taylor Swift was releasing stuff. She yes. had a big breakout year. Um, you know, Sarah Barales, who we've had on here before. I mean, TikTok, Absolutely. Takesha, Your Love Is My Drug. Oh, my God. CeeLo <laughs> had the F.U. song. Like, remember how Which big that does, was? does not seem like that was 2010. No. And but that, I, I feel like that song holds up, by the way. <laughs> I, I agree. I mean, people use that still. Yeah. I mean, B- California Girls, Katy yeah. Perry. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, she Black, had an Black album come out that year. Yeah. Uh, yeah Brutal Mars. A, just it was crazy. A pretty good year. Which, yeah. you know, makes me wonder. There has to be some sort of strategy to, okay, if I had a record that was basically complete, could have went out in 2009, right? Mm-hmm. Like, do you wait until 2010 just to get it into the fresh decade? I would argue you probably would. Yeah. I mean, wouldn't you think just from a business perspective? Yeah, I mean, so, like, maybe. The fact that there's so many good popular songs of 2010, I think yeah. makes sense that maybe they just held out a little bit. Maybe. I mean, maybe. I think it always it always depends, too. Like, I guess, the, uh, you know, it depends on the album cycle. You know, there is a lot of marketing behind what goes on when yeah. albums are released and things mm-hmm. like that. Sometimes they record these and they sit on it because they're waiting for, you know, a really a really schedule based on the time of year and activity. Yeah. And, and so there's a lot that goes into marketing of of records and music and when things are released and the timing of things. So uh, it's always it's for the most part pretty calculated. Absolutely. Pretty calculated. But yeah, you think about the 2010s in music and man, we got a lot of really cool music back then. Now, yeah, we listen to today mm-hmm. that still is on the radio and it feels like this was came out like a year or two ago. Yeah, it's so true. It's so true. Wow. We really went down the rabbit hole when I was supposed to start with your first song. So what yeah. that first song so, is. So yeah, let's start with that. <laughs> Fallen by Volbeat. Did I say that right? Yes, you did. Volbeat. Yes. Volbeat. Very good. Thank you. Thank Excellent. you. Excellent. Our, our normal listeners are saying, Amanda, you nailed it. And thank you. And this was actually a suggestion by a few people on our Facebook page because I heard I saw Volbeat come up a couple times in the comments and I had put it on there before I even read those comments. Love just, it. So just want to say. That's <laughs> right. That's right. Great minds. So this was my favorite of the three. I thought it might be. I thought it's- it might be. It was very interesting. So it started, I was like, oh, here we go. (laughs) (laughs) Here we go. Here we go. But honestly, I was there for it. It's every note that went further, I because it wasn't over aggressive. It was just energized, I feel like, Mm -hmm. in the genre that it belongs. Right. Um, And so I might shock you by the words. I may choose to put this song on. Wow. Yeah, normally we're talking like skippage, right? Like would I skip it? Like and how difficult to skip it. Yeah, would I skip it? Would I choose to put it on? Like it comes on the playlist. I won't hit skip, but I don't know if I would necessarily. So you're actually saying you would actually maybe like this one and go, I would choose to put this on. I really would. I feel the message behind it Mm -hmm. was really sweet. You know, just Mm -hmm. about I think you could apply it to losing anyone too soon. Yeah, I think so. And the grief of moving on past that. And I just think it was very well written. I felt like you could almost like feel the heart of Mm -hmm. the songwriter in the delivery of it. It just 
It really felt cozy and warm for being a little, like, loud, if right. that makes sense. Mm-hmm. And I don't think cozy and warm are descriptive words that metal fans would use. But yeah, here we are. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Volby, Volby is a very interesting band to me because they combine actually a lot of different things. Uh, they they combine, like, I think, like, the like the big sing-alongs of, like, punk and, and some hardcore stuff, like, very melodic hardcore. But then they get very metal and hard rock. So when you listen to this record, uh, it's interesting. They even combine, like, some, like country stuff sometimes or like western sounding th- it's it's really they are a very eclectic band and how they do it and how they pull things off it's it's pretty wild and i've actually seen volbeat live a bunch of times and always That's a great cool. show always a lot of fun always bring the energy just um but they they have a very eclectic sound for sure <laughs> especially on this record i feel like it goes up and down between like you know it'll be a song like this and it'll go into like a really like kind of heavy very fast song like <laughs> like metal and then it'll go into something that's like very like uh country inspired and it's 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 interesting and but they somehow they pull it off <laughs> it's i and i feel like sometimes if you even if you think of a country artist mm-hmm. and you're playing through their CD. There are right. some like very twangy love songs on it, but then there's some more pick me up. So I think right. when you're talking with metal or rock stuff, you're just expecting it all to be the same. But I, I, I would suspect the distance between the type of yeah. songs is similar. It's just with metal, it probably just doesn't happen as much as, you know, going out of the box a little bit more with country or. Yeah. Rock. And it's interesting, too, because I don't know if I would even. It's tough. Like, I feel like Volbeat to me is like they kind of get lumped into metal, mm-hmm. but then they also get lumped into hard rock. So they're, they're like a they're a hard band to sort of genre qualify. I think they're just <laughs> they're just a really good band. And but even on the radio, like you'll hear them on like rock radio, and then you'll hear them on like metal stations. So it's like sure. they kind of like fit in a lot of different places. Mm-hmm. So it's it's hard to like throw a dart and say you guys are a heavy metal band or you guys like you guys are straight up hard rock or you guys are, like a melodic like punk hardcore band. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like they're like everything, you know? It's it's interesting, but uh, they they do it well. They pull it off and this record that came out back in the day uh was really good. Um this is from the Beyond Heaven or Beyond Hell Above Heaven record. And uh, I think I actually saw them on this tour. I think this is when I may have seen them for the first time was this on this tour. The Danish band. Yes, they are from Dane. They are from yeah, Dane. <laughs> they are Danish. <laughs> I was like, is that what we say? No, <laughs> it's do me they, being an idiot. Are they still living there or do because when you said you've seen them multiple times, do they just do a lot of traveling then? They do. I mean, they tour That's all over great. the world. They're a band that plays everywhere, all over the Good world. So, yeah. Yeah. They even had a song, too, where King Diamond, who a fellow Dane uh, guest sang, you know, Mr. King Diamond of the of of Merciful Fate. Gotcha. I, don't, I think we've done a King Diamond song back in the day. We... I don't know. I don't, I don't know, know if you could. I don't know if you could handle King Diamond. That's the thing. <laughs> Maybe not. Maybe not. Season one, definitely. Probably not. No. Season four here. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. We'll have to do like no presents for Christmas or something like that. Oh. We'll have to do that that fun okay. song. All right. Sounds lovely. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So let's hear a bit of Fallen, yeah. guys. And if you haven't heard this one in a while, um, or ever, just, hopefully this will take you back. Or ever. <laughs> Although I suspect you may have because this is this is a big this is a big radio song for them. Let's hear some of this. Down my- oh, let me get that. Oh, you know, it would be good if I actually had that queued up properly. Here we go. Let's do it again. Let's do it. a really good freaking song i love to, i love playing this in the car it like gets me like tapping feel the sadness burning in my heart you live too early final up so many things i should have seen but in your mind you knew it will holding on to what i got i love his voice but things do seem so dark and cold the fire burning down my head
love this chorus. So, yeah, what a great tune. And that that is it's such a great like radio song, you know. It just and you know the the lyrics and the song is great because it is it's a tribute to his his father, you know, who mm-hmm. passed away, and uh, it's a really beautiful tribute. But the song is great, and you just you know it, it's got an uplifting feel to it, even though it's about some. But it's it's just the lyrics are great, yeah. it makes you feel good. It's a great radio rock. I don't I. I really love the song. I really it's, do. The vocals, I do think I really like his vocals a lot. Um, and it's not a strained vocal. You know what I mean? Like no. It's just, he's just singing. And yeah. he's just playing. And it sounds good. And it sounds correct. Because sometimes there's like crazy things that are happening when you're listening right. to metal. And it's it can be very overstimulating for my brain. This song felt very tidy. Very stimulating. Yes. Very tidy. Very this, tight. Yeah, it's very tight and tidy, and I think it was just on point. Um, again, the message is good. I wouldn't skip it. Probably would put it on. Really, what it it's got some good energy. It really the energy behind it feels right. Okay, good. Like just, I, I I think so too. Like if I'm going for a brisk walk because I don't run, everyone I don't run. So I'm never going to say, if I was going for a run, this would be great. No, if I was going for like more of a brisk walk and I want to be a little bit motivated. And listen, I walk for 30 minutes. I don't care how far I go. Like 30 minutes is where I want to like, I want to hit that time. So this is, um, this is five minute song. So I could listen to this song. It's a nice even. It is. It is. (laughs) It is a five minute tune, but yeah, it just, it just goes, you know? It does. I could listen to this six times on loop and be done with my walk and probably not get bored of it. Yeah. It's a good song. So uh, where do I rate this song? So where do you rate this song on a scale of one to five records? Because mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I wouldn't skip it. Like I said, it's mm-hmm. it's good. So is this an eternity playlist song? Absolutely not. Like this is not the song I would be picking to okay. put myself on a you know deserted island with. This is this is this is not the one. Fair. So that that like it's just never going to achieve five records for me. But this is coming in at four point five for me. 4.5 and i wow. feel very very this is on my working through life playlist now wow all right here we go i'm gonna i'm gonna give it give it a little get a yeah that's great 4.5 is much higher than i thought that you would rate this one to be this, honest with you this is I a really good working through life song i thought you would enjoy the song but i didn't mm-hmm. think you would enjoy it that much so 4.5 is pretty good because that's pretty near the top it's near the top it is very near the top and the only reason it's not higher is because you know you got to choose wisely when you're limited yeah. <laughs> you do you do have to choose wisely <laughs> yes so 4.5 i really liked it so great song swap no Chris that's Leo. excellent i i take your 1.5 records 4.5 sure. 4.5 sorry I said 1.5, 4.5. Chris, have some more coffee. (laughs) I accept your 4.5 records and not your 1.5 records. (laughs) No, that's cool. Uh, I appreciate that. So, hey, guys, how would you rate the song Volbeat, Fallen by Volbeat? Let us know in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. And, uh, and yeah, do you agree with Amanda? Is it a 4.5? Is it more than that? Is it less than that? Let us know. We want to hear from you. Okay. So. Mm Mm-hmm. Your first song to me. Mm -hmm. Now, if I was to ever question what kind of a mood Amanda was in, all I would need to do is hear this first song (laughs) and go, oh, I know exactly where Amanda is right now. (laughs) I know where Amanda is right now. (laughs) Let's remind everybody. This week's songs weren't necessarily for full points. This is just where my brain and my soul was. It's where so she it's, was. So it's okay if you don't like them, if you rate them low. It's I stand behind my song choices regardless. And I've got uh, – and by the way, real quick, everybody who's on Facebook, Facebook is having some problems. I got a notification with, with the names of things. So it says – so I don't know exactly who this is because it's for whatever reason, Facebook and StreamYard are not playing together right now. But the comment says, I agree with Amanda. I could I, I could have liked this song for my walk this morning, this morning. going on my playlist. Sorry, 
It's a so, good walking song. It's a good walking song. I probably have to log on to Facebook. Honestly, to if I was a too. runner, it probably would be a good runner song too. But since I'm not a runner, <laughs> here since we are. You, since you're not a runner, <laughs> it's yeah. a walker song. <laughs> you're a walker. You're a brisk walker. <laughs> You're a brisk, brisk walker. walker. Oh, so that, this brisk. is my father, by the way, coming in with, with that one. So I, I can see it. Yeah, Dad, Dad Baglio. Baglio. Yeah. So, yeah, there is a thing going on with Facebook and StreamYard. I had it. The minute I logged on to StreamYard today, it was a thing going on. We're having a problem. So people won't show up with their names. So, all right. At least we're getting the comments, which is great. Yeah. But now I can see. I have it up here. So Perfect. I can see. <laughs> all right. So your first song to me, as we were just discussing, yeah. is called <laughs> that's why i write songs by jamie johnson and that's j-a-m-e-y now mm-hmm. i did not know who jamie johnson was mm. probably to the shock of maybe many people in country right now <laughs> but he is a quite an accomplished singer songwriter i mean when i was looking i did my my research and mm-hmm. He is an award-winning singer-songwriter, and uh, he has basically written his songs for many people. He has inspired many songs. He does have a new record out right now called Midnight Gasoline, which I'm kind of like, I, I do want to check out mm-hmm. after hearing this song. Mm-hmm. And he is also the owner. It, what, what I read here was that he bought or now owns um, um, Johnny Cash's old studio in the cabin oh, intro- i didn't realize that that's fabulous like i was like fabulous i don't know what yeah. it turned into when i said that but. so he was doing like a cash uh cash cabin series uh of collection of albums that are recorded oh. at the fame studio which was once owned by johnny and june carter and is now owned by oh sorry i take that back is now owned by their son so sorry he did gotcha. a bunch of recordings there he doesn't own it that's i, I misspoke see. there uh john carter cash is the owner of that but he's been recording records there under a uh, under this uh, sort of series, a cash cabin series, which is very cool. Yeah, so he is uh, just a guy who's really written a lot of records, and in fact, his he had a song called the L- Lonesome Song. It was certified platinum in the gold certified 2010 album, the guitar song, which debuted at number one in Billboard Top Country Chart. And that was in 2010. 2010 so he had an award-winning number one record back in 2010 in the country charts and uh i think that this song was on it because this was I released in 2010 so, and i think um, the, yep it was i'm looking at right now so the guitar song that record won an award and was number one country record in 2010 very good jamie johnson yeah also seeing, uh, let's see, I'm getting the new Jelly Roll record is actually very good, too, and been jamming to a lot of guitar uh, lately. Oh, Guttalax. <laughs> That's Dan Christian's. I was like, I don't know how to yeah. say that. <laughs> I'm going to say Guttalax. <laughs> uh, That's great. Thank you, Dan, for for checking in on that. I have to like keep my eye on this side and then come back here so I can see who's, who's talking to us. But uh, either or, I, I got to understand with you, um, understanding you are in a mood this week, <laughs> uh but prior to the mood mm-hmm, mm-hmm. is this a record is this an artist you listen to a lot or was it just literally this song mm-hmm. you were just had all the feels like exp- mm-hmm. explain elaborate explain. so it started with so i know him from in color excellent song very popular country song about um people looking at portraits of when people serve so very fitting for today in right. Irene. And it was just someone telling the story of you should have seen these days in color, basically. Like you're looking right. at a black and white photograph, but like, oh, you should have seen it in color. And I just really liked that song so much. But in my research for 2010 songs, this was one of the songs because he did have the album out. And this one just sat right. Like, that's why I write songs, you know, where he writes a lot of songs, but sometimes you just don't have the words. You don't have the gumption to to right. say certain things mm-hmm. or speak certain things because you just can't get through to people sometimes. Right. And so when this song was like, that's why I write songs or that's why we write it out. That's why we do something or go for a walk or right. clean your house and start throwing stuff away. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's things people do when they're trying to purge negative right? right and i just really appreciate it this song it just it just struck a chord when i was going through my list of options for this week and i mm-hmm. said that's the one okay yeah and i mean listen it's uh i mean for me listening to it uh is a very obviously introspective song it's very yeah. 
Extremely. quiet. But I got to tell you, the one thing that really that I really liked uh, about this song was, and once again, I never heard of of uh jamie of, of jamie johnson before so what i did like was the real quality of his voice mm-hmm. i really enjoyed the quality of his voice and he has that great classic country vibe a real warmth to his voice i don't necessarily and we'll put it on in a second i don't necessarily think i would choose to put the song on but i definitely totally didn't understand. hate it and i mm-hmm. i got my i felt my i felt myself hanging on the words because they really enjoyed the, yeah. the timbre and quality of his voice. So let, let me let me play it so everybody can yeah. kind of hear this one. Um, and I'd love to hear from you guys what you think of it. I mean, it's it's not – we just went from Volbeat Fallen, so you guys are about to get a huge <laughs> mood shift uh, get, right now. Y- yes. It's – my list is a downer, everyone. But that's okay. That's life. It's it's life. It's life. But listen, you chose what you chose, and, uh, and I'm glad because, once again, I had – and the whole point of this show – is to pick songs that we may or may not have heard before. That's the point. And I will say out of out of all your songs, uh, this and The Quiet Your Mind are two songs I'd never heard before. Okay. So here's a little Jamie Johnson here. Like you, you fell in love. Yeah, you're just anticipating it. Or you threw it away. Looking for that perfect thing to say And you're no good with words That's okay That's why I write songs It might make you laugh Or make you cry Might help you make it through a bad goodbye You've been through it, and so have I. And that's why I write songs. I remember all the times I felt like somebody knows me all too well. Cause it was my life story. I was listening to I don't know about you But I buried family And a few good friends And held a brand new baby in my hands You see, it ain't just what I do who I am and that's why I write songs so yeah see you get I I find myself getting very lost in this song because I am very captivated by the quality of his voice Mm -hmm. and the way he's telling the story and the way he's singing because I love how it's almost like this talk Mm-hmm. singing and then he comes into like that and that's why i'm right mm-hmm. like it, it's and then all of a sudden it's so melodic mm-hmm. so it's a really i i find it to be really interesting the the style of this and i i absolutely love too because i gotta tell you guys i don't know how you're listening to this right now but if you're listening to this song on this is a really good headphone song mm-hmm. because you can hear the plucking of the strings, you can hear yes. his fingers, you hear him taking breaths. It literally sounds like he goes, like, and you know how much I love this, Amanda. It's like, you know, flip record, let's go. Yeah. Like, that's what it sounds like to me. That it's just, let's go, mm-hmm. and you're going to get this song laid down the way it is. Now, I don't know how many takes, who knows, but like, that's how it sounds to me. It literally sounds like they just turned the mic on and hit record, and he went and did the song, and that's the quality it sounds like. So I really enjoyed the sound of the song the feeling and i like the way it's arranged now i gotta be honest with you there's and i know these two songs are not anything alike right but it's (laughs) it's no but there's there's a song so it's by uh little feet 
right? Okay. And it's called it's by it's uh, it's a you know if anybody who knows Little Feet out there, uh, I don't know. Do you know who Little Feet is? I don't, maybe not by name at least. Okay, so they did a song back in the day, um, very early on, and it's called Willing, right? I love and, the covers. Yeah, and let Very me get cool. let me see if I because I wanted to, I just had it up too. Uh, let me see if I can get uh, get that back. Oh yeah, so Willie. So I thought not it just it had a very interesting similar feel. Okay, right, but not like you'll. I think you. I, I don't know where I'm going with this. Other other than the fact that when I first heard it, this is the first song I heard about. That popped so into let, your brain. It, it popped into my brain. It popped into my brain. So let me let me see if I can get uh, this song queued up because I thought I had. It all queued up. And well, then, and while and you're then looking for so, it, yeah. like when I listen to um, this song, it's almost like there would be a grandpa and maybe a grandson sitting on a front porch somewhere. Right. And he starts to tell a story and then he's like, well, let me grab my guitar. Let's like and goes into like he's he's passing on knowledge. He's passing on the story just alongside music. It just yeah. it, it feels so personal mm -hmm. and so important to me when I hear this. And I think. That was my message more than anything this week was like, if people stop talking to people, there will never be change. That's true. And so this was a way of ha talking to people. I, I through agree. Through a song. And I just, I, it, I it think that's good. Very good to me. Yeah. I think that's a great, um, I mean, listen, we talked about it before the power of music, right? And I think yes. that if, it, if it's, if it's hitting very you healing. in that way, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it kind of expresses a lot of times the way you feel without actually being able to say or find the right word, you Absolutely. know? Absolutely. Yeah. I'm so grateful we live in a world with music. That's right. God, I can ever imagine. So this is Willin' by Little Feet. Cute, man. Like, it's cute. Linda Rostance actually sings on this one. I've been warped by the rain. Oh. Driven by the snow. I'm drunk and dirty. Don't you know? And I'm still... In. And I was out on the road late at night. I seen my pretty Alice in every headlight. Alice, Dallas, Alice. And I've been from Tucson to Tucumcari. Like to have to beat a tone above. So I wouldn't get weighed And if you give me Weed White and wine And you show me a sign So, yeah, great song, but that's that's where, like, when I first heard that song, it had that same, like, that, you know, like, that, dun, 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 like, that talking, singing, yeah. going into, like, something really, so, yeah, that's, guys, this is how, like, we, we make fun of Amanda, but, you know, <laughs> I, I might as well make my list, I might as well put my picture in the serial killer board, because this is how I think about music, so I'm like, ooh, this sounds like this, so, Anyway, that I just I had to play that because I had to get it. I actually had to get it out of my head because it was stuck in my head. Stuck in your brain. Yeah. So yeah. So that was like little feet willing, but when I heard the Jamie Johnson, that's why I write songs. It just completely different songs, but just that sort of that style, like just yeah. made me think of uh, the little feet song. So it's a a little bit more up tempo. Right. Yeah. They, yeah. They're both the storytelling delivery. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, one is one is about a truck driver selling drugs, and the other one is like, you know, being very personal about why he writes songs. <laughs> I stand by everyone has a story to tell. Everyone has a story to tell. <laughs> or sing about. Yeah, yeah. So, all right, guys. So where am I rating this song? And once again, we'd love to hear from you where you would rate this song on a scale of one to five records. So I had started off by saying that I wasn't sure if this is a song I would choose to put on. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Which I get. But... But I think that I would add this to a playlist, mm. possibly. And I was thinking about it again as I was listening to it, because I have listened to the song a couple of times. But, you know, as the day goes on and depending where you are, like, yep. I do like the song. Mm -hmm. I do have to be in a mood for it. So I think it has to go on a mood playlist. OK. Which to me would probably be the Sunday morning playlist. Interesting. I think it might go on the Sunday morning playlist. 
I think Sundays are great days to be introspective, introspective, yeah. however you say that word. Right. Um, and I think this, this song demands that. Like, you are captivated by his delivery going, I need to listen to what he's saying. Uh, you are because he's telling the story and yeah. you and he's it, it's just it's it's he's just always like singing and talking and then mm -hmm. and I kind of love when he hits that the chorus like yeah it's just great to me like how he can do that talk and then he just sings this like such a soulful like melodic chorus and then goes back into like the the talking you know narrative yeah yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. really cool stuff um I really like it so uh, where do I rate this on a scale of one yeah. to five records? So I am going to put this because I did enjoy. There's a lot to enjoy about the song. It's just that, guys, I mean, I, are you with me? Like, it's not something that I would just go and put on just I randomly, you know. <laughs> but with that being said, I enjoyed the song. So I, I did like it. So I'm going to give it a 3.3. .3. Okay, you know, not honestly. and it's making it's it's gonna get added to the Sunday morning playlist. Three point three plus being added to a playlist is better than I expected. So I yeah. received that, and I'm grateful for it. Thank you, Chris Baglio. You are welcome, and you guys let me know how you would rate this on a scale of one to five records, as well as once again we started off the show with Volbeat Fallen. How would you rate that song on a scale of one to five records? Amanda gave it a four point five. She really enjoyed it, and I just gave this song a three point three. So. Now, before we move on, I do want to take a moment here because this is the this is the time in the show where we have to thank our sponsors, the, the people true. who are sponsoring us. So first up, I do want to thank Cardiac Attack Coffee. Yes, <laughs> Cardiac Attack Coffee. Guys, Cardiac Attack Coffee, it will get your heart pumping. And I've said this a hundred times over, and we will continue to say it because they're going to be a sponsor until the end of the year, is that a man and I, we take our coffee very seriously mm -hmm, mm -hmm. very seriously and we don't you know we drink coffee but like you know some coffee just doesn't do it for you you yeah. know it just doesn't do it no it doesn't do what you need it to do and i will tell you right now cardiac attack coffee does everything i need it to do mm -hmm. it definitely gets me going it gets me pumping mm -hmm. and it just is a great way for me because i am like was I was on the air the other day and I I am typically a three cup a day but sometimes I need that fourth cup mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but I think when I drink cardiac attack coffee I only really need two cups because it's so good and kind of does what it has to do it right so it speaks to me to the quality of the coffee that instead of needing four I only really need two really awesome cups and you know what I'll say and this is kind of I'm not getting crazy when I say this but when I had COVID I lost mm -hmm. my taste and smell for a year mm-hmm while it's recovered, it's not recovered like it should be. And there are very few coffees. Like I, when I sniff a coffee, I'm like, I mean, yeah. it kind of smells like coffee. Like I know what coffee right. should smell like, but it's never come back like that. And when I tell you, when I open up that bag of cardiac attack, I'm smelling my coffee again. You and are. the way it makes my heart smile, it just, I could cry just thinking about like, because I love coffee so much to your point that to not be able to smell it the way that I was so satisfied, like the Folgers in your cup, like moment, yeah. you coming down the stairs because you're smelling coffee. Like I have not had that in a very long time. And so to be able to like get that whiff. Mm, so if you need that whiff of coffee, cardiac attack. Yeah, absolutely. A hundred percent. And you know, you've got some great choices. You can choose Thank between you. a dark roast, Guatemala, a medium roast, Costa Rica, and an Ethiopia light roast. And now they actually have these very cool so variety sweet. packs, these small variety packs. So you can sample all three and such one, see which one you like the most. And they also have some of these great cold brew packs too, uh, where if you're a cold brew fan, you've got different ones from mocha to red regular to New Orleans, the cinnamon roll, oh. fruity pebbles, pumpkin pie, chocolate chip mint. Yum. And by the way, you know, and you know, we're also big merch people. And I love these guys style of totally combining like punk rock and hardcore and just mm -hmm. making the whole brand fun. So they've got great merch and of course, mm -hmm. awesome mugs and glassware too. So, so true. guys, get your coffee now. Order a, a cardiac attack coffee dot com cardiac attack coffee dot com and use the code song swap showdown at checkout for 15 percent off right now and listen with the holidays coming up i me 
I love coffee gifts. So, you know, getting someone a bag of coffee or that variety pack with a really cool mug or whatever is a great little gift to give to somebody. Give the gift of coffee this holiday <laughs> and use our code Song Swap Showdown for that 15% checkout. Cardiac Attack Coffee, get your heart pumping. I love it. Yes. <laughs> All right. And we also want to say thank you very much to our other sponsor for today, Overhaul FM. So listen, guys, when it comes to podcasting and podcast apps, there are a lot out there. I'm not going to lie. There's a lot out there. But what makes these guys cool and unique is they're doing it in a nice little, they, they have a nice little spin on it. They, they have a nice little, I, I love what they have here. So it should be made simple, right? You shouldn't have to like search hours upon hours for like the I podcast that, that you love. So yeah. much. Right. It and it's it's like, you know, it just takes a long time. Mm -hmm. So what I love is that what they've done is they've made podcasts simple and easy for everyone. And they created podcast overhaul so that way you can listen to your favorite podcast and get all kinds of like hints and strategies along the way to help you with your own podcast. So if you're a podcaster as well, so it's twofold, helps you find podcasts as a listener and helps you as a podcaster get discovered. And you could literally do all this in 10 minutes or less. So right now, guys, use the link in our show notes and download, download uh, over overhaul FM today, right now, because it's going to be great. And they actually have this cool little button feature where it actually helps you discover podcasts. Mm -hmm. so, so right helpful. down here, you'll see like this little button and it's cool because it bases it on your taste and say, you just want to like find something Well, you hit that button and I'm hitting it now on my phone and it randomly finds something that is a suggestion for you, you know, much like TikTok has a for you. Yep. So to, find something for you, or you can bounce over to a trending tab and find something that's trending if you want to look for something new. And they also have these great packages as well, too. If you are a podcaster, a seven day, a 14 day and a 30 day podcast mm -hmm. promo. So listen, once again, head over right now to our show notes, hit the download button for overhaul FM, use that link and you can get this for Android and also iPhone and discover a new podcast, guys. Do it free. Do it easy. Do it simple. These guys have done it all. Overhaul FM. Love it. Right? Overhaul Absolutely. FM. Well, <laughs> and I would say a lot of our listeners listen on demand or live on YouTube, which we love. Yes. But I think a lot of them do that because they don't have the the tools to make podcast listening easy. This yeah. is good. Like, don't sleep on podcasts. You guys, the amount of true crime podcasts I consume. Woo! Yeah. I mean, look at this. Like, it, of course, they know that because, look, true crime is right on their their yeah. marketing. <laughs> yeah. And, and to Amanda's point, if you're a true crime, if you're into music, if you're yeah. into news, sports, whatever it, it is, what's great about this is it learns what you like because it has a great AI technology built into it and it'll make the suggestions. Once again, that for you button is very cool. So if you're looking for new stuff, looking to discover, down, download Overhaul FM today all right guys let's get back in to right. the show thank you so much to our sponsors and of course we always want to thank radio garden state for hosting our show as well and being an awesome partner so all right getting in to songs number two, <laughs> two, two, two. which again is way more energy than my first song to chris but your second song to me was all i want by a day to remember yes mm. Um, <laughs> um, so I don't love it. Mm -hmm. I don't hate it. I didn't think you would because I've given you a day to remember before because you hate the bait and switch that they do, especially in these <laughs> early ones. Uh, um, but they are a really great band. I mean, they're a, a, a really awesome band, and this record was was pretty big back in the day I, I would say um i wouldn't like i don't I, I probably would skip it okay i probably would skip it but um <laughs> i would say I, I would skip it so you're already right on to the, i would skip it i would i really would but i like the message behind the song mm -hmm. um this is from coming from songspecs.com um we always love their to using them as a tool on our show yeah. but in all i want mckinnon is it mckinnon 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 grapples with his own fears, doubts, Yeah, desires. McKinnon. Yeah, Jeremy McKinnon. 
and how to go about reconciling with them. It's both anguished and anthemic, a song that lays his woes out on the table but refuses to wallow in them, instead searching for an escape. This creates a theme of needing to take a chance, no matter how high the stakes. McKinnon has stated that hopes to convey to the listener that Rather than dwell on your worries and doubt, it's better to simply move forward and progress with your life. And I love that message about this song. So maybe the message is the only thing that saved this for you? Very much. Ah. Um, (laughs) (laughs) But the message is wonderful. And, okay, let's be real. Maybe this message could have been written in a country song and missed a ton of potential listeners that needed to hear this message. So for that reason, I am grateful that A Day to Remember can put a message like this and deliver it into an audience that needs to hear it as well. Yeah. So I I, I really I'm, – I'm a little conflicted because, again, the message is here, but the sound is here, and the sound is just isn't my, like, cup of tea. We all know this. We all know this. We all know this. Um. So I probably would skip it, yet I would read it as a poem. Okay. <laughs> I'd love to hear you read these lyrics as a poem. All right. So let's <laughs> let's listen to A Day to Remember, uh, All I Want, if you've never heard this before. So here this is. <laughs> check, check this out. <laughs> read it as a poem. I love that. it out and you're like Chris when are you fading this out All right, I want to listen to it all, but we can't. I know. Well, you know, that's why we have Radio Garden State. So we we have more time, we'll play the tunes. But yeah, so, all right. So that was a day to remember, a little bit of day to remember there with Mm -hmm. uh, All I Want. So, Amanda, Mm -hmm. you've already made it clear that this is a song that you would not choose to put on and you would probably skip it. So So I'm anticipating a not very good rating (laughs) from you right now. Let me, okay, so let me preface for the people who don't understand my skippage. So much of my life is listening to music around a lot of people. So I had to take that into consideration that this is not a song Fallen I could have listened to probably even in the store. And people would be like, huh? Like, that's interesting, but it wouldn't be like crazy. Like, I can't just put this on in the store. Well, you could. I could. Uh, But it's not my taste or the people who come into the store's taste that I'm aware of, at least. (laughs) I think you're making a very broad assumption, but that's just me. (laughs) Probably am. But knowing my customers as much as I do. um, So I just feel like if this popped on, I would feel like I would have to skip it because I just wouldn't be able to listen to it in freedom. Now, if I was in the car with Marcus and Owen, Mm -hmm. I probably wouldn't have to. So I'm going to add that caveat to my skippage. Okay. That more than likely I'm skipping. Okay. But if, but if all stars aligned, and I didn't feel like I had to skip, I wouldn't skip. 
So, <laughs> all right. So <laughs> if you were the to, murder board, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm like, wait a second. I was just trying to follow that train of thought right there. It sounded so complete in my head, but I know that they're straight. So, okay, I'll repeat that. <laughs> so I feel like most of my life would require me to skip it, right? But if all stars aligned where I didn't feel like I had to skip it, I probably wouldn't skip it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you're, you're saying my instincts would tell me to skip it, <clears throat> but... In a certain situation, you wouldn't skip it. And that certain situation may be in the car with, with Marcus and Ellie. Yeah, like or like if I was around you and we were just in an area that someone started playing this song or they put it on, like I, I wouldn't be like, oh, my God, turn it off if it was appropriate to have played. And it's not like this is a bad song. Like it's not like a – Right. It, it's not inappropriate. Right. It's not. No, it's, it's not. not inappropriate at all. It's just the, the tone of it. And it was no Cookie Monster vocals. No, there were no Cookie Monster vocals. Which I know you're, you're always like, oh, my God, Dad, I remember. Here come the Cookie Monster cookie vocals. Cookie Monster. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this is. um, Yeah. So that, that that's where I stand. OK, so. So with all that being said, where are you rating this? I'm going to give it. All right. I'm not going to give it in the twos because I think it's okay. a it's a. Well thought out song. I thought that's where you were going. No, no, so no, you're, no. Okay, so we're not in the one or two territory. No, but will your three third song to me? Maybe. But this one, no. <laughs> this one, I'm just going to like put right on the line as 3.0. Okay. Right so on the line. 3.0. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right. So listen, it didn't, it's not I a I skip. I hate it. It's, it's not a skip. It's a 50-50 skip. It's a skip in a certain situation. Probably more like 95-5, but <laughs> yes, there is now, exceptions. Would Marcus and Owen like this song? Um, I think so. Yeah? You think so? Um, they honestly might find it a little boring, if I'm being honest. Mm, interesting. They're, they're, listen, they went to Indiana over yeah. the weekend because they mm -hmm. went to see Michigan right. play. And uh, I can only imagine what their, their car ride sounded like. I feel like I need some, like, I got to hang out with Marcus. They're really cool. They're really, I, I really cool. I think I want to hang out with want to hang out with your uh, with your family. I think mm -hmm. we'd get along really well. I think if we lived closer together, our families would really enjoy. I think so out. too. I think it would be a lot of fun. I think so too. Yeah, between the girls, Owen. Yeah. Yep, and they're close enough in age. Like I know the girls are older than them, but like not like I have a toddler. Yeah, like they're so, all basically adults. Yeah, when it, when Amanda calls her son her baby, it's. <laughs> He's 18 in January. Yeah, he's he's a man. He's, he's, he's a full grown man. Basically a full grown man. <laughs> I mean, listen, I'll always be your baby. But... Absolutely. But yeah, people really don't think that yeah. I, they think I have a baby. Yeah. I don't. <laughs> nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> he's almost 18. Almost 18. So, all right. So listen, a 3.0, I will take it. It's actually higher than I thought. Okay. So I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised. That's I thought good. you were, I thought you were going to dunk on this a bit. So. Happy day. No, she's saving it for my last song. Happy day. Saving it for my last song. So, yep. all right. So <laughs> your next song to me is another song that when I heard made me think of another song. So, Oh, let's hear it. Yeah. This is so exciting. your next tune for me is Zach Brown's Quiet Your Mind. Yes. Now, I, uh, once again, not being a, a versed Zach Brown fan, like I know a lot of people are. Mm -hmm. You know, I would say I'm becoming I, I'm very novice to the world of Zach Brown. I, I've told this on the show many, many times over. I got a couple really good friends. My friend Ken in particular has been he's a big Zach Brown guy. He's been show, giving me tracks to listen to and yeah, and all kinds of stuff. And you've given me tons of Zach Brown over the years. And I got to tell you, I, I don't dislike Zach Brown. It just Hasn't been on my radar, but I've I've heard interviews with him. I love his respect of metal and rock, and he's yeah. a he's a metal guy who, who makes country. So all cool stuff. I mean, he's he makes really good music. But I just you appreciate haven't... him as an artist very right, much. Right, right. And I say all the time, he has an open invite to come over here, and hang out, barbecue, sure drink do. beers, crush crush beer, whatever. Yep. He, he always he open invite Zach Brown. Mm -hmm. I will oh, I will never revoke that invite. Well, I won't say no, but it's it's an open invitation because, you know, we're at 50,000 downloads now, Amanda, 
on this show for our podcast. So, uh, you know, maybe Zach Brown is one of those 50K. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure of it. <laughs> or if anybody knows Zach Brown and can get him the invite, you know, he's welcome. He can come over for Thanksgiving dinner if he wants. Sure. It's, it's all good. Either, yeah. either place. Right. Either place. <laughs> anyway, um, but this is coming off of the 2010 record for him, uh, which was huge. It's called You Get What You Give. And this record was was really big. I mean, it debuted number 32 in a U.S. Uh, uh, Billboard Hot Country charts and issued a lot of hits. Mm -hmm. um, She's Walking Away, a duet with Alan Jackson, a uh, song Colder Weather, uh, Knee Deep was another one, and, uh, and Keep Me In Mind. Uh, was another single from this record. So, I mean, he very had a lot of singles. Year. Yeah, yep. very successful year for him. I mean, actually, five singles released. No Hurry was the last one that he released. So he was releasing singles from this, by the way, in 2010 when the record was released, all the way up to 2012. Which I don't get. Isn't that amazing? Wow. It's, and all of what you, like the, I think the whole album is stellar. Yeah. Great, great album. Yeah, I mean, it definitely, the, all the critics were loving it. People, uh, Samantha Stipp from the Barger, uh, Badger Herald calling it a masterpiece and all for mm -hmm. soulful, pleasant melodies, honest lyrics, and a classic middle finger, <laughs> classic fiddle, sorry, middle finger, classic fiddle and steel guitar combo. That is, <laughs> uh, they've called it better and better, consistent album. Uh, Jessica Phillips gave it a near perfect rating. So, this is a very, I guess I would say, a very loved record. And including one, there was a live version of Whiskey's Gone also appeared on the soundtrack to True Blood. Remember that show? True Blood? I do, yeah. Suck it. <laughs> In uh, 2008. So, <laughs> by the way, I couldn't finish True Blood. I, I it, got, it got way out of control for me. Those first couple seasons of True Blood were amazing, though. It's true. <clears throat> I didn't watch it all the way through. Did you finish True Blood? I did not either. Yeah. Suck okay. <laughs> it. <laughs> uh, such, such a great show. The first couple seasons were great. Anyway, so Zach Brown, man. So this song to me reminds me a lot. And I, I can't I, think um, of the song that you yeah, are comparing it to. So, and, and once again, this is in my head. So it may not make any sense at all. But <laughs> well, let's your last listen one to this. did. Yeah, I don't. I doubt my the one that I'm thinking of is gonna make any sense. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, play this anyway. So I'm let's hear a bit of "Quiet Your Mind" by Zach Brown Band, and then I will play a little bit of the song that kind of reminds me of Wayne to it. Yes, you're already, you're already sweat. She's already got the sways. Got the Look at you. Going. I love the Amanda sway. <laughs> the Amanda so sway. All right, here we go. Perfect day, wishing I wouldn't get any older. They say that it's gone for you, know it now. Quiet your mind, soak it all in. It's a game you can't win. Enjoy the ride. Feel the change going on all around me. It's strange how I'm taken and guided where I end up right where I'm needed to be. Quiet your, quiet your, quiet, quiet. It's a game you can't win. Enjoy the ride. So, I really like this song. And I love 
I am a sucker for songs in six eight time. Mm. Um, waltz. Mm-hmm. I, I love it. I love six eight time. When I was in my band, we used to do a lot of a lot of six eight time stuff. Uh, just because it, it gets it really, I think it puts people into a mood, and we used to love playing that that kind yeah. of t- signature. Well, it's a, I think it's a very natural cadence for people. Yeah, I think very so comfortable too. Comfortable for people. Yeah. So um, here's okay. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm no, I was going to say. I feel like so when you look online and mm-hmm. you look at people's comments about that song, mm-hmm. it's remarkable how like you see it over and over and over how people just really relate to this song and say it's like medicine for the soul. Yeah. I uh I got to tell you I really like the song and once again not being a a Zach Brown aficionado or or like super fan or anything like that like every time you give me a Zach Brown song I pretty much I'm like oh, man like I have it been on my me up. <laughs> but I have been on my own listening to more and more Zach Brown. So I just you know I haven't heard all the different songs. That's why it's like great <laughs> when you give me songs. So I like the song for a lot of reasons. Um I love the sound. I love the 6 8 time. I, I really enjoyed this one. So and I'm gonna give you the others and why I yeah, enjoyed I, it. So here's the song that came to my mind when I heard it. I can't wait to hear this. So here's Led Zeppelin's Your Time is Gonna Come. I was not thinking of Led Zeppelin, but oh, however yeah. here. Oh, so it's a very long opening here, but I gotta, I gotta close my eyes to really listen. Similarity? This is um This could be purposed for so many things, this opening. So it's a bit of a long open here, like like that one. They shorten it for this, but. Mr. Led and the Zeppelins, I cannot wait to hear. You actually may really like this one. I'm feeling like I'm already enjoying this part. It's kind of sounds church music <laughs> yeah. I dig this. I love this first Led Zeppelin record. This might be this little one. like. Chris Baglio, I'm really feeling this. That's all you seem to do. Messing around every guy in town. Putting me down for thinking of someone new. Always the same, playing your game. Drive me insane. distantly like i can see it though yeah i would so, rather hear it once again this is how my mind works <laughs> and so and knowing that zach brown like you know rock dude classic 100%. rock metal like i know he loves he likes zeppelin and so when i hear that song it sounds like zeppelin to me a zeppelin influenced mm-hmm. you know and zeppelin you know as you just heard zeppelin they love country they love blues they loved american r&b they're huge huge elvis fans like that was the one thing they couldn't wait to do when they got to the states was go meet elvis and go to graceland sure. like loved elvis and and they loved country and and all that um and jimmy page of course being a, a basically a child prodigy on guitar like we talked about it like yeah. last week Amazing. how he was like you know Fort well, little jimmy page or, yeah. yeah playing on like these jingles in in england Good for him but uh when, when it comes to that like i i hear 
I hear the, the the lines and the parallels between that. So that's when I heard that song, I go, this reminds me of Led Zeppelin. Your time is going to come. So I like it though, but I like mm-hmm. it. And so I, I kind of looked at that song and was like, wow, this is a, like a country version of Led Zeppelin. Like very cool. And whether he, that was intentional. Sure. I have no idea. Sure. Like uh, he wrote the song, but like for me, as a rock fan, I really appreciate the vibes that that song this gives for me. Attention. Yeah. So uh, with all that being said, Amanda, mm-hmm. I would choose to put this song on okay. and I would put it on a playlist. And I really, really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. I'm going to give it a 4.3 record. Really? Yes. I really like this one. I thought it was cool. Oh, and, and listen, in 2010, I was nowhere near listening to anything to do with country. I, I am music this snob. This is like, so true. I uh, was not anywhere near country. I mean, honestly, up until doing this show with you mm-hmm. uh, and a few like older vintage country stuff. Uh, sure. No way. Yeah. I'd be like, ah, eh, Zach Brown, that my thing. Like, yeah, chicken fried, whatever. Heard it. T- like, like, that's, <laughs> th- you know. Which is so much more than chicken fried and toes. Right? But I'm like- all, yeah. But I'm also 14 years older now, you know, and like I've been through stuff and like I just am different and always say it all the time. Doing a show has expanded my musical palette and my openness. So as mine, like tell me in 2010, I would have been getting fallen a 4.5. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Season one, you would have probably turned your nose up at that one. I would have. It would have been 2.5 best. Yeah. Probably. Best. I mean, honestly, yeah. So I, uh, I really did enjoy this song. I really liked it a lot. So Thank you. I, I appreciate I you putting it on my, uh, on the playlist of 2010 songs. And if we're gonna say, does that hold up? For me, I just discovered it. So yeah, it holds up. Like <laughs> all your songs, uh, other than your last one, is one I, I, I hadn't heard the other two. The, the third one, mm-hmm. your third song, I'd heard before, and I heard the, the original version. We'll, we'll, we'll go into. We'll it. go into it. Okay. We'll go into it. So we are diving into our third and final song, Chris Baglio. Here yes. we are. In my Here relentless we... pursuit of <laughs> trying to turn Amanda to the dark side. <laughs> so he gives me diamond. <laughs> diamond eyes. Diamond by eyes. Def- yeah. By Deftones. The, the, the soundtrack for serial killers <laughs> and or sex, whatever. <laughs> um, This is like the loudest of the three. Yes, it is. A hundred percent. Which to me, definitely, that's, I think, where my disconnect mostly comes from Mm -hmm. when we're listening and reviewing metal and rock music. Because in season one, I haven't said it in a very long time, in season one, I'm like, it makes my ears bleed. (laughs) And sincerely, like, that to me is what it feels like. Like, there's, I'm very sensitive to sounds. Like, to me, I can listen to something very quiet, and Mm -hmm. I hear it very, very well. But other people don't. So when this type of song comes on, it's just a lot for me. And this, back in 2010, this record uh-huh. uh entered in to the top 10 of the billboard 200 it was <laughs> a top really? it was a top 10 record yeah huh. i mean listen the deftones are a wildly very popular band who have only gotten more and more popular over time i mean they have a lasting legacy i mean this band's been around now since the uh since the late 90s and this was their sixth record at the time and they've really? released more since then yeah and uh diamond eyes that was applauded it was their sixth studio album and actually this was an interesting one too because at the time their original bass player mm-hmm. had gotten to a car accident and went into a coma when they were Did listening to this record so he didn't get to finish it and of course sergio vega from quicksand uh one of my favorite bands of all time uh he stepped in filled in and they were able to finish the record and then unfortunately he did pass away mm-hmm. uh that was a chi chang so he he did not uh, obviously come out of that but they finished the record mm-hmm. and the record was a huge critical and commercial success and debuted as i said in the top 10 very in billboard 200 which it's very fascinating because this is such a niche Mm -hmm. sound so to like arrive in the top 10 of that like that's very impressive honestly like i had a really hard time understanding this song like that shouldn't surprise anyone so i had to take take to chat gpt and i was like give me an honest review of this song yeah i used the word honest you know so i didn't like (laughs) 
put Amanda, you know, into it. I didn't say give right. me a crappy review of it. Um, and it did say, it gave me a lot of information, but it did say, written that it became a symbol of resilience and renewal for both the band and the fans. Yeah, and it was definitely a very heavy, like, this song is heavier, and the, the breakdown and all that is kind of, like, reminiscent of their earlier stuff. So, mm -hmm. I don't know, it was just, it's a very cool track, and, like, the thing with Deftones Records is, for me, they take you on a journey. Like, now they get kind of pigeonholed as, like, shoegaze metal type of thing, okay. but honestly, when they, other than, like, the shoe, like, when they came out at the time... And I know some people have a very love-hate relationship with Deftones and Deftones fans and all, sure. like, whatever. But, like, I really like their music, and I appreciate that they have always taken chances and expanded their sound and have just done different things. And whether it's heavy or soft, like, they're not afraid to go to places. And I, and I we've talked about this many times before, <laughs> I love Chino Moreno's voice. I think it's great. I love it. I know you make fun of it because you're like, I don't really, but I think it just works <laughs> so well with what they, how they play. And there's, I mean, it's such a big part of it. So anyway, I, I really do love this band. I, I think I sent you the things they're doing it. They always do that, uh, uh, Def, Deftones day, like Deus Le Morto or whatever it's, uh, yeah, they do it yeah. and they always do it in Vegas Which and they put it and it's I a, and think it's fun. It's fun. Yeah. I do think that's fun. Um, <laughs> I just, you know, it's, I know, I know. I know. I, I knew this would be heavy for you. But once again, I I'm looking to expand your musical palette, and maybe exactly. I'll hit a, I'll hit it with a Deftone song. Maybe you one know, day. Maybe bet, one day. As to your point, though, you didn't think it was going to be Fallen today, like I, I did not. I mean, if and if we walk away from anything on the show, that's a huge win in my book. Yeah, I uh, it is a big win because I thought I didn't, I thought you would enjoy it, but I didn't think you would enjoy it that much. I I now expect the opposite's going to happen here with. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Chris. Does very well at understanding the uh, serial killer board for Amanda's brain. But yeah. there are days I shock him. There are days you do shock <laughs> me. We still four years together and you still surprise me. So, There's still surprises in our relationship, Amanda. This is so true. <laughs> Nothing getting old here. No. So, all right. So let's listen to some Diamond Eyes. <laughs> let's do it. Let's do it. By uh, the Deftones. Let's get it over with. Let's I'm get kidding. it over with. Yeah. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> You're not really kidding. I know. Although, like, what a beautiful album. Yeah. It's a great album cover. Mm -hmm. I just think owls are. <laughs> so good. I have to say, Christmas drums. But see, here's a genius of the death tone right here. Like, in that melody, like, it really catches. I love watching your face when we play this stuff. So six eight. This is where this is where Amanda get it loses it for Amanda. This is where I start like tensing up a little. All right. I can I can keep going on and on with this song, but it's it's a great it's a great song and it's a great album opener too because that that song opens oh, the album. That's smart. That's smart. <laughs> <laughs> it's very smart of you, uh, very Deftones. Yeah, <laughs> very very. Yeah, and I, I think this this record they did two great back to back records to me: uh, Diamond Eyes and Saturday Night Wrists. Okay. Uh, Saturday Night Wrist, two awesome back to back records that just. It's again the it, band's not afraid to take chances. They just aren't what? musically. To, 
I would assume I'm no artist. We're no artists here at the Song Swap Showdown. No, we just, we just do things like we're Cisco and Ebert here. Yeah, like but, we're like the hot, the hot dog and soda combo of music that's reviewers. Right. <laughs> that's right. But I would suspect the pressure to produce another successful record is not easy. No, I mean, and a band that's been around since not, actually they started. Let's hear. Let's Deftones actually started in 1988. Really? Yes. I and weird. I really like that. And they year. went back and forth and they didn't even release their first record until 1995. All right. So say that again. So they started in they 88. Started right? as a band in 88. 88. Like and all they, these guys all grew up together and all that. Sure. They started, they you know, becoming it, like, a band. Playing and then, in some Right. Places. And just figuring okay. it out. And then they finally got it figured out. And then they got signed to Madonna's label, Maverick, in 1993. And then released their first record, Adrenaline, in 1995. So from so they've been around to ninety five. They had to wait and prove yeah. themselves to, yeah. before they got a record. Wow! And they're going back out on tour again next year because my sister's been like, "Oh my god, we got to get Deftones tickets." And How like, old are they? The Deftones or yeah. the the guys in the band? The guys in the band. Um. Well, Chino. Let me see. Uh, Chino is. Uh. Yeah. So these guys are kind of all like Chino's a year older than me, so he's fifty one. Oh, okay. So, so he was okay. born in seventy three. And Stephen Carpenter also, um, he's a little bit older too. He's fifty four. So these guys are like in their early, early to mid fifties, very early. You know, still young. I mean, and born when in they, the seventies. But they were very young then when they were starting this band in eighty eight. Oh yeah, yeah. Young I mean, babies, like like babies. most bands, like most bands, you know. But it's amazing yeah. that they've been able to stay together and kind of figure it out and keep yeah. it going all these Through years. Some really hard years of growth, like mm -hmm. that's impressive. I give you know what I'm giving them an extra point for that. I find that to be remarkably impressive. Yeah, I mean, I think that they. Um, I mean, their last record came out in 2020, which was Ohms, which was it was all right. I mean, it's sure. not my favorite. It was it was pretty good, but I am looking forward. They're doing some new music. I'm looking forward. I want to go see them on this next. They're great live. Love them. Excellent That's band. Great. That's very really energetic. Really a lot of fun to go see. All right. You know what? Okay. So listen, <laughs> I was going to give them in a two point range. Okay. But after listening to all that, like I really appreciate that little bit of history on on them, that where they were, how long they persevered until they actually got a record deal. How many people would have stopped? Yeah, I mean, they just, you know, they started off That's as kids, high, high, high schoolers and, you know, like any friends came together, did the band, you know. It's so rare, uh, though, to have the and just, endurance to get to that finish line, though. Yeah, they figured it out, you know. They, they just did. They, they hung in there. They hung in there, man. <laughs> For that, I'm giving them three records. I was going to give them like a 2.5. I'm giving them three records just because right. I think their grit is very admirable. Admirable. Yeah. Bull. I See, look at that. I swayed the judge a little you bit. You did sway I the judge. I swayed the judge. So 3.0. Yeah. So good. it means in the 3.0 language, that means it's a song that maybe you wouldn't choose to put on, but you liked it. Yeah, average. 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 Mid. Mid, mid. I would say I think you like the song until he starts like Honestly. with the with the kind of the yelling and the screaming the, and the, the cookie mo like not the silliness. You know, there was not the a silliness. Lot of <laughs> there's not a lot of cookie monster. Just no, he gets into that higher screeching. like screeching, the screaming yeah, a bit, a screeching. But you know, I guess the owl is a screecher too. So <laughs> <laughs> look at you because there's an owl on the cover. They had to go with the. They had to be yeah. the whole brand. Yeah. <laughs> now, if you saw that album in the, uh, in the if you saw that album cover in a store, would you think that they sounded like this? Oh, good question. Would you, um, if you just if you had never no. knew the Deftones, if you saw that in a record store, would you be like, "Ooh, look at the out!" Like, would you think no. that they sound this heavy? No, you know why I would think that. I feel like um, like Stevie Nicks. Could have mm. had like an owl cover. Ooh, like I yeah. feel like, so my opinion of what an owl would mm -hmm. represent would not be Deftones. All now right. the name may give me a little bit more of a clue. Right. So the two together, but I mm -hmm. still probably would not have guessed it went there. Okay. Um, yeah. But very cool album. Great All right. thought. Oh, we should digest that more. We should. We should talk about each album cover. We should. You're right. Maybe we should add that onto the. <laughs> what? What would if you didn't know who this band was? What genre did you think it would be? Absolutely. Yeah. Now it's a three hour show. See yeah, what now happens. It's, now it's a three hour show. Yeah, <laughs> guys, we need another hour. <laughs> All right. So before we move on to your final song, our yeah. final song that we're going to talk about tonight, I do want to just call out because yeah. Ian from Australia, and know he's he he loves the show. He he's a longtime supporter, big so community wonderful. member, uh, a Patreon supporter as well. 
and uh, and he always does a great job to him and Dave Mattingly, who's uh, MIA M- I- M- I- today, but we love you, Dave. So yeah, hopefully we we'll see you. you soon. We miss you. Uh, usually they, they leave picks for us. So mm-hmm. Ian, using the theme of being songs from 2010, he said for Chris, he goes, he's going to give me Rocket, Little Rocket, Little by Little Red. I'm going to, yeah, Rocket by Little Red, page one by Katie Noonan, and Fall at Your Feet, Crowded House Cover. By Boy and Bear. And of course, Ian from Australia, being from down under, always giving us and always introducing us to I some really it. cool Australian bands. And every now and then, too, on our Patreon, I'll definitely listen to them and I'll give my reaction to them as well. So for Amanda, he is saying Big Jet Plane by Angus and Julia Stone, Mr. Mysterious by Vanessa Amoroso, and Made of Stone by Matt Corby. I feel like. Um... I probably will like those. I just like the names. They do. They sound good. They sound very... They sound I love good. the name Vanessa, too. Mm-hmm. And he's also left some suggestions for Dave as well. So for his suggestions for Dave are Revolution by John Butler Trio, OK Hark by Lisa Mitchell, and Sunday Best by Meg Washington. I like So do, those are his official picks. And of course, guys, if you have songs that you think that we should check out, please let us know and uh, we'll we'll take a look at them. And of course, on our Patreon, too, we're always looking at them. And while we're talking about our Patreon, I do want to thank our awesome Patreon members right now. Amy White, Mark Ronick, Dave Mattingly, Mr. Ian from Australia and Johnny Beyond and the whole back of the Zero Box crew. Thank you so much for joining our Patreon where we do our best to put as much content in there as we possibly can. Uh, you guys can join our Patreon if you want to support the show. It's a great way to support the show. Literally, you could join for free for seven days and then choose from a membership option starting as low as $1.50. Boom. Uh, that's our hot dog and soda combo special. We do have perks. You do get stuff. There's discounts on merch. We like to send little free things to people. Uh, we put up little audio shows. We do videos. I actually thinking about doing this, Amanda. What? I um, I was going to do it last week for our Patreon, mm-hmm. but I didn't. I didn't have enough time. But no. I still want to do it. Yeah. So, uh, a little anniversary of a film happened. <laughs> A very classic film. What classic film? <laughs> Kiss meets the Phantom of the Park. <laughs> <laughs> that was not, I nope wouldn't have been yes. on my thoughts. And I was oh released in 1978. It was on uh, NBC, I believe. I think it was NBC aired it. I think it was NBC. I might be. Yeah, NBC aired it, and I was going to do a watch along of the whole movie. Of the entire. Movie? of the entire movie watch along so okay. i still want to do that by I'm... the way so it's on deck and i want to do so guys if you want first of all let me know if you want to see that thumbs up thumbs down but i right. wanted to do it i was going to live stream it also out on youtube as well but i think about maybe making it special for our patreon people i just this is the thing folks chris and i want to do so so much but to have the time. Now, if we got more Patreon members, more sponsorships, we could make this way more of a full-time gig, and we would want to. We want to do that. I but until even, we get a little bit more funds, we got to do the other things like real jobs that help put food on our table. So to watch a whole movie, Chris. <laughs> yeah, but it's it's Kiss Me, Safina. So great. I even made, just to show you guys how prepared I was to do you, this, I even made a thumbnail. <laughs> Look at that. It's ready to go, guys. So do you of the park. want to do a watch along with me of Kiss Meets the Phantom of the Park? You could do that in our Patreon. I, I'm thinking of doing it. I want to do it. So should I do it? Thumbs up, thumbs down. What are the I'll watch alongs would you love side. to see? Amanda wants a thumbs up. I. Uh, you no, should watch it with me. We would. I would. <laughs> How long is it? It's uh, it's ninety. It's ninety minutes. That's a <laughs> Chris. Okay, just let's digest this. Buckle up, everybody. When Chris and I do review middle um review videos, yeah, we're we are talking about and watching and reacting to three to four minute videos, and it ends up twenty minutes long. Right. What. What is this gonna be like a twelve hour video? <laughs> no, it's gonna be like, nine. No, it's just it's a watch along. Uh, watch just it, like, watch it with me. No pausing, no talking. Just wa- just. I mean, maybe walk. some talking, but like but literally, like, watch it with me going. and comment and stuff like that. Yeah, while it's going. 
<laughs> Guys, let me know if you want this to happen. I, I need to know because I really want to do it because it is. I watched when I was a kid. I watched this when it came on air. My sister was was oh. like uh, one at the. Actually, she was 1978, so she would just be born. I don't. Even, oh, when, baby. She may not have been born yet when this was dropped because I think it was a summertime thing. Uh, but yeah, this was a classic. It was on anyway. I don't want to bogart the rest of the show, but I just want to know from you guys, I, our community. You know should I do it? Would you, would you participate in it? I would probably do it on Patreon first for our amazing Patreon community. If you guys are even interested in doing that <laughs> and then probably bounce it over to YouTube or something like that. But anyway, or I may just do the whole thing on YouTube or do it for Patreon and YouTube. So yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Okay. Wow. <laughs> That's commitment. Okay. That's anyway. Something. All right. So kiss. The Let's Phantom get back of the what? Phantom, I, no. Phantom, Phantom of the Art, Phantom of the Park meets the Phantom of the Park. It's a terrible movie. It it looks like it it's terrible. Appears that it would be. It's a lot of fun. Okay. It's a lot of laughing. There's a lot of. This is why I want to watch it with you. But was it intended to be funny? I don't know. No, I think it was intended. To, I think it was intended to be campy, but it became even worse like, than that. Yeah, not like a comedic yeah. thing. See, okay. that's why I think I won't need to watch this with you. Okay. All right. Well, let's see. We'll see if we can carve out ninety minutes to two hours to to watch this together. Okay. We'll we'll do our best. Do I our think best. we can make it happen. All right. <laughs> Okay. All right. So let's get into it, guys. Let's wrap up the show. Here's our last song. I am talking about Redemption Day mm -hmm. by Johnny Cash. That is Amanda's last song there to me is. for today. And mm -hmm. uh, I have heard this song before. And now, and I imagine a lot of you have too, because this was actually originally a Shell Crow song. Yeah. That she yeah. wrote and released in 1996 mm -hmm. on her, uh, on her self titled album. And Johnny Cash didn't. Cash then, not cash then. Cash then uh, covered it on his last record, which was America for Ain't No Grave. Um, and uh, according to Song Facts, she had told uh, Reuters that when she was recording the song, the man in, black, man in black frequently called her on the phone to gain insights into the lyrics. She said if he was going to sing a song, it was going to be part of his molecular makeup, she said. Mm -hmm. He was going to deliver it as if he wrote it. The questions that he asked and his concern for whether I would like what he was doing, it was really just humbling. So her version was a lot more politicized about mm -hmm. national redemption while he transformed it into more of a tune about personal redemption, mm -hmm. which I most a lot of cash songs do have a lot of that Absolutely. personal introspection, redemption, yeah. and remembrance, this is all one that. One of his final songs, which it is, was. I mean, how appropriate. Yeah, and of course she said, you know, the song was one of the last things, as you just said, that he recorded. And and Cheryl Crow said, having Johnny Cash record one of my songs was my biggest accomplishments as a songwriter. She said, talk about bringing wow. weight to a song. He owned it. Afterward, he called me and asked if I liked the version and quizzed me about why I wrote, wrote Redemption Day. But we <laughs> never got to sing it together. He died three months later. But they did release it. She did do a duet with him on her duets Which record in 2019 cool. where they paired the two vocals together. Yes. So, And I did just see her. She opened for Pink. Uh, I went to go oh, see Pink cool. last month. And she was great. She came out. She she, she nailed it, thing? man. She was great. You know, Cheryl Crow just Staple. doing her thing. I got to tell you, her. I mean, she's great. But her, her band was, I was watching her band play was the, phenomenal. All great players. I love that. Yeah. Anyway, um, Interesting song. I, you know, it's always great when you hear Johnny Cash's take on songs and how he does it. Not yeah, the style he owns. He owns it. Absolutely yeah, owns do, it. He does. And, but you know what? Is it because he takes so much time to be true to the song, the message? I mean, I just you know, I just don't feel like he just sits down and does it. No. I think there's a lot of intention behind what he sings and how he delivers it as this this encounter yep like proves um so did you know had you heard of johnny cash's version of this song first or before or just cheryl crows i had I remember back in the day mm -hmm. that i remember when she released this song mm -hmm. and then I, and then the big deal of johnny cash and this record and, mm -hmm. and you know the whole thing and i remember hearing this version then okay Okay. And obviously, you know, anything, especially this record, too, because, I mean, it really was a big deal at the time when it came out. Yeah. That whole America and everybody kind of knew, too, that was probably, you know, he was sick, but he was like, I'm going to record this record. Yeah. Um, It's happening. I'm doing it. 
And I just, I love that he was able to get that done. And he also recorded the record that came after America 500 Highway. So he recorded them at the same time just so he can get them out. And this album actually debuted number three on the Billboard US 200 at the time. Just imagine that. You know, it was. Months uh, before someone's legacy is concluding, right? Like not their legacy, but their life is concluding. I mean, this is what he pumps out. Yeah, it's truly, you know, much like how David Bowie left his final record knowing he was sick yeah. and just trying to say, I got, I want to get this song out. I want to get this music recorded. Yeah. You know, I, uh, I think it's great, you know, and of course, Rick Rubin produced this record, which was also at the time a really big deal that he would w- work with Rick Rubin. So uh, it's, uh, it is interesting to hear the music on this record, knowing that this is being recorded by a guy who. He knows it's His coming. Days are numbered, yeah. right? But he's tr- he wants to get this music out, and I, I, as an artist, as a creative man, I appreciate that so much. It's like you know what, what, what I'm gonna try to make the most mm-hmm. of the time I have left. Yep. To solidify my legs and get and leave as much as I can of myself out there. Like there's just something so poetic about that. Well, you know, you're going out on your own terms almost, right? right. And he doesn't sound weak during this. It's a very strong sounding record. So it, I just feel like it was just such a gift um, to give his fans and this world. I just love it. I love his version better than hers, but I appreciate her version. I do. I do. I mean, and listen, I think people, you know, they write these songs, they do it their way. And then it takes another artist to kind of do a different spin on Johnny Mm -hmm. Cash is one of those people. So let's listen to a bit of the redemption song. A Redemption Day, I'm sorry. I'm thinking of uh, Bob Marley. Uh, (laughs) Let's listen to some Redemption Day here by Mr. Johnny Cash. And is this a song that you guys know? Have you heard this song before? And how would you rate this one on a scale of one to five records? Let us know. The Man in Black. The Man in Black. Like, and you even know from his guitar playing, like, it's just great. You're just waiting for that voice to come in. I've wept for those who suffer long But how I weep for those who've gone In rooms of grief and question wrong But keep on killing so cool. It's in the soul to feel such things I feel it in my stomach when I hear it But weak to watch without speaking Oh, what mercy sadness brings, if God be willing. There is a train that's heading straight to heaven's gate, to heaven's gate. And on the way, child and man and woman wait, watch and wait. For Redemption Day Fire rages in the streets And swallows everything it meets It's just an image often seen On television Come leaders, come ye men of great Let us hear you pontificate Your many virtues laid to waste And we aren't listening There is a train That's heading straight To heaven's gate I love that line To heaven's gate and on the way, child and man and woman wait, watch and wait for Redemption Day. Mm. So, yeah, that's uh, the Johnny Cash version of that song. Mm. Let's let's I'll, I'll, let me find a Shell Crow version real quick, just sure. for so people want just a comparison here. And um, I think. Um... You really can tell the difference between her approach being more of like an activist approach, kind of like governmental, like just yeah. in that way to him being the intro perspective. I just think it's so distinguishable on the two different versions. Yeah, absolutely. 
So here's her version, a little bit of her version. Yeah, and she's coming from a completely different perspective. For sure. Yeah. Different feeling. But how I wait for those who've gone. Still very haunting sounding. So yeah, that's that's the uh, Shell Crow, a little bit of Shell Crow version of Redemption Day, which you know is her song. She wrote it, and of course, uh, the Man in Black went ahead and covered it and did his version, which we just heard For about. Sure. I feel like her version is great, like at the end of Cold Case, where they're like putting back, like yeah. the like the you know yeah. the box, and they're putting in it says clothes now. Like I feel right. like her version is so good for that, like an overcoming and and like there was redemption and right the check of the box. That's right. You know what I mean? Where yeah. his is more of absolutely like you need hers is you need the help. Right. His is you need to. Right. Go inside yep. yourself. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Uh, it's uh, it is very, very interesting. The two different takes. And, you know, obviously Shell Crow versus Johnny Cash. Like it just, you know, it is. I mean. Yeah. You, I don't feel like I'm even comparing the two. Like it's no. just such a they're they're just so yeah. great in their own right. Yeah. So where am I going to rate this on a scale of one to five records? Well, it's a great it's the song itself is very good it's very well written but you know a minute you hear johnny cash do anything it's it's just adds a whole thing to it like the johnny cash treatment of stuff you know your soul yeah it really is so i uh i did i liked this version uh i hadn't heard it in a while so it was nice kind of revisiting that again and Mm -hmm. it just makes me want to go and re-listen to those those last couple records again and once again it's a great headphone song because you can hear Mm. his voice almost sounds completely unfiltered like literally the man singing into a mic with like barely any effects you know what i'm saying like you feel like you're he's standing next to you Mm -hmm. and you're listening to him sing like on the other side of the glass you know in the recording studio like it just sounds like that and uh it's so raw and so personal and you hear it you hear it so i really like that and it makes me like really have nostalgia feelings about the, the the recording of that record and of course him and all that. So listen, where do I rate on a scale of one to five records? I'm going to give this a 4.0. Woo-hoo-hoo. That's a 4.0 for me. I, I do. I really like it. It's nice. been a long time since I heard it going on. Uh, probably going to be adding us to a couple playlists. Now that I think about it, you know, I, it does. It needs to be added. It needs to be added. So that's where I'm at, guys. And that that's a song from 2010. So all the songs today were from the year 2010. That was today's theme. Sorry, we didn't do Kesha or <laughs> Flo Rida or or Usher or anything like that. We once again, we want to try to do songs that challenge each other, songs that maybe we'd forgotten about. I'd heard two songs today that I hadn't heard ever heard. And I heard a song I'd forgotten about today. So Absolutely. that was, and um, I gave Amanda songs that she has never heard in her life. Correct. <laughs> it's so true. So all of our songs are always nestled in our song stop showdown, 2024 playlist on Spotify. You can get every single one of them. And Hey, listen, if you really just want 2010 songs, Spotify has those on there too. They've yeah. got like top 20 uh, or top 100 of 2010. So, you know, you can find those popular songs yourselves. <laughs> Absolutely. A hundred percent. Yeah. Those, there's many of those playlists up there. There's so and, many. Yeah, there's so many of them. So, yeah, check out our playlist. If you're listening, uh, you can use the code or I'm sorry, use the link in our notes and you can go right to our playlist. If you're watching, you can actually scan the QR code on screen and I'll take you to all our links. Everything that we're talking about, our yeah. website, songswebshowdown.com, playlist, episodes, merch store, everything everything so (laughs) all right well with all that being said amanda we have one last piece of business to attend to today before we wrap it up Mm -hmm. and what is it amanda what time is it it is time to spin that wheel of show themes (laughs) 
it is time to spin the Wheel of Show themes. And there Love it is. Love this time. I know. This is, I think this might be your favorite part of the show. It's so, like, oh, the suspense. Ah! So, I got, hopefully it took out the, uh, so if it lands on a 2010 thing we'll again, just, we'll. We'll just we'll, spin her we'll again. Wonder. I don't mind. I enjoy So, it. I'm going to shuffle this. Uh, shuffle it. Shuffle <laughs> it. Shuffle it. Shuffled three times right oh, now. It has been shuffled. All right. Here we go. The wheel is shuffled, loaded with themes for our next show so let's give it a big spin and see what theme we have for next week oh boy oh boy amanda what did it land on (laughs) (laughs) back in time 1983 so, continuing on our theme of looking at songs and artists from a given year, our next episode is going to be songs from 1983. So, we did 2010, and now we're jumping back to the 80s. Now, we did a 1984 song. I think we've done eight, like we've done some we 80s. Did, yeah. The 80s. 80s episodes are a lot of fun. I love doing the 80s they episodes. Are. They They're they're fun to see if they hold up. Yes, that is the big thing. That do they hold up? Yeah, because there is a lot of like nostalgia to them naturally. But yeah. do they hold up? Would the babies today mm-hmm. click play? Right. So I'm excited. I, I am excited too. So next week's episode will be songs from 1983. What a we'll, random year! <laughs> I know. Of course, we will. Make the post on our Facebook page and our Facebook group, which you could join for free. And we look forward to your song suggestions because you never know. They may make our list like today. Uh, I, there was a lot of suggestions for Volbeat made my list. So we love to hear from you and love to hear your suggestions. And of course, even like Mr. Ian from Australia and Dave Mattingly and everybody else who drops song suggestions for us. We love it. Please keep it up. Tony. Uh, Fork Boy Donato, he does everybody, uh, my, my brother in law. So, you guys do a great job bringing the song suggestions. So, we'd love to hear from you. 1983 is a year we will be looking back on on the next episode of Song Swap Showdown. So true. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for joining us here. Another episode of Song Swap Showdown. We appreciate you. Please make sure you like, follow, subscribe to the show over on YouTube and anywhere you get podcasts. Of course, if you like what we're doing here and you want to support the show, we do appreciate it. If you join our Patreon, where you could join for as low as literally a dollar fifty but you can try it out for free for seven days see if it's the content that you like absolutely if it's to your liking so with that amanda any final words today this was fun thank you for hanging on through my yeah a little bit of (laughs) low energy songs this week appreciate you chris and listeners that's right i balanced you out i (laughs) balanced you out we had two extreme energy yeah So, all right, everybody. Well, thank you so much for watching and listening to the show. And we will see you next week for another live episode of Song Swap Showdown, where we look at songs from the year 1983. Cheers, guys.